While Windows 10 may be the most convoluted operating system Microsoft has ever created, it does include many handy features that are quite useful. So coming up, I'll show you more than 30 tips, tricks, and features that will help you get the most out of using Windows 10. Because there are many of you watching this that have recently upgraded, this video will include a mix of the newer features with some of the older classics that are still available for use with Windows 10. With that out of the way, let's get started. With so many to get through, I'll save the small talk and story time for another video and get right to it. Perhaps one day if there's time, I'll tell you the story about the day my mama got out of prison and got ran over by a damned old train. Let's get started with AeroShake. This cool trick is an old classic that's been around since Windows 7 and it still works today with Windows 10. If your screen is getting cluttered with open windows, you could just minimize each window individually, but instead I'll show you a faster way. Left click on the title bar of the program you're working with and with the left mouse button held down, shake your mouse back and forth from left to right to minimize all windows. And if you want to bring all the other windows back up, just shake your mouse again. And that's all there is to it. If you're like most people and you're not a fan of the newer start menu with the live tiles, thankfully there's an alternative start menu that might be more useful for you. As most of you know, if you go to the Windows icon in the lower left, a left click of your mouse will bring up the tile ridden start menu. On that same Windows icon, a right click instead will bring up a menu with shortcuts to apps and features, power options, Windows PowerShell, and a whole lot more. A newer feature that's been added is the ability to create a new calendar event from the taskbar without having to open the calendar app. In the lower right, select the date and time. Pick the date of your event, give it a name, select a time, I'll go with 7 a.m. Click on the check mark, enter the location, And when you're done, click on Save. The built-in screenshot tools for Windows have always been inadequate when compared to third-party software. Closing the gap, Snip and Sketch is the best screen capture tool ever to be included in any Microsoft operating system. To activate it, press the Windows key plus Shift plus the letter S. Your choices are Rectangular, Freeform, Window, and Full Screen Snip. I'll go with Rectangular. When you left click, drag an area, and let go, the selected region will be saved to your clipboard. After which, at the top of this page, you'll have tools to mark up your image. Programs that run in the background can offer many beneficial features, like the ability to show you notifications, but they can also waste bandwidth, use up system resources, and drain your laptop battery. To turn them off, go to Settings. For new users, click the Windows icon in the lower left and select the Settings icon. Go to Privacy. In the left pane, scroll down and select Background Apps. If you toggle this top switch to off, it will stop all apps from running in the background. Or you can leave it turned on and switch off each app individually in the list below. When working on a task, notifications can be a huge distraction. To gain more control over these notifications, in the Settings app, go to System, and in the left pane, select Focus Assist. You have three choices. Leaving it off, you'll get all notifications from your apps and contacts. Priority only will only show you selected notifications from the priority list, which you can customize by selecting the link. And alarms only will hide all notifications except for alarms. You can also choose the times and activities to have Focus Assist turn on automatically. Speaking of notifications, Go to System and select Notifications and Actions. In a most recent update, Microsoft added an easier way to get to this page that will save you some time. So we'll close this out. In the lower right, go to the Action Center, and in the top right, click Manage Notifications. Getting here is a lot quicker than having to navigate through the Settings app. Here's a cool trick that uses a full screen slide down to power off your computer. Here's how you set it up. On your desktop, right click, go down to New, and select Shortcut. In the empty field, enter what is shown. When you're done with that, click on Next, and then Finish. And here's the new shortcut. Now when you double click on it, 
Just drag the bar all the way down to the bottom of your screen to power off your computer. I won't be doing this now, still got work to do. Dictating is no longer just for third world leaders. Now you can do it in Windows 10. In all seriousness, voice dictation has been around for a while in Windows and has improved quite a bit. In any text field to activate it, press the Windows key plus H on your keyboard. Now you can give your fingers a rest and use your voice to start dictating, period. At any time you need to bring up a menu of emojis, press the Windows key and period key on your keyboard. In addition, there's tabs to access K-Emoji characters and a good selection of symbols. The Windows Clipboard now lets you copy and paste across multiple devices with their Cloud Clipboard. To enable it, go to Settings and click on System. In the left pane, select Clipboard. Turn on Clipboard History and enable Sync Across Devices to copy from one PC to paste on another. Pressing the Windows key plus V will bring up the Cloud Clipboard. If you're familiar with Apple's AirDrop, Microsoft now has a similar feature called Nearby Sharing that will let you share content with other Windows 10 computers connected to your network or Bluetooth. To enable it, go to System, then Shared Experiences, and toggle the switch on for Nearby Sharing. Now when you select Share in Microsoft Word and many other programs including Photos, you should see Nearby Computers. Light mode is the default color with Windows 10. Changing to a dark mode is the first thing I do after a fresh install. Go to Personalization, and on the left, select Colors. Your three choices are Light, Dark, and Custom. When you select Custom, it lets you set the defaults for Windows and apps separately. I'll change mine back to Dark, which changes the color of the Settings app and menus, File Explorer, the Start menu, and a whole lot more. While we're on the subject of reducing eye strain, let's head back to the settings home and select system. In display, switching on the night light reduces the blue light emitting from your screen, which can help you fall asleep easier. If you go into night light settings, you can schedule it from sunset to sunrise or set your own hours. Shifting gears, programs you have pinned to your taskbar can be easily opened without having to click on them by using the keyboard shortcut Windows key plus a number. As you can see, File Explorer is 1, the Windows Store is 2, Vivaldi 3, with the final program to the right, Spotify, being 0. So to use the keyboard shortcut, the program must be pinned from 1 through 0. As an example, let's open the Windows Store with the Windows key plus the number 2. Microsoft says that updates are important because they offer security patches, bug fixes, and the latest features but there may be times you're not ready to update, or you may have heard about issues with the latest updates causing problems for others. That of course would never happen with Windows 10. To pause an update in settings, go to Update and Security. Whether you have Windows 10 Home or Pro, your options will vary. Below Check for Updates, there's a button here to pause updates. If you go into Advanced Options, you can select another date up to 35 days to pause an update. After you reach your pause limit, you'll have to get a new update before being allowed to pause again. Let's open the built-in calculator app by going to the search bar in the lower left and typing calculator. When it appears, click on it. Many people don't realize just how powerful it is. Most of you are familiar with the standard calculator. If you click the menu icon in the upper left, you'll find additional calculators, including scientific, programmer, and day calculation. And below that, you'll find more than a dozen converters. Let's go back to the search bar and do a search for the Alarms and Clock app. Click on it. Go to the Clock tab. In this tab, it'll calculate the time difference between two locations. This is useful if you have friends, family, or business associates outside your area. For example, I'm in the central time zone in the U.S. It shows Los Angeles is two hours behind. London 5 hours ahead, and Sydney, Australia 16 hours ahead. To add a new location, click the plus here at the bottom. Then in the upper left, enter the new location. I'll go with Tokyo, Japan. And with it added, it says that it's 14 hours ahead. Once you add a location, it is automatically saved in the app. To delete a location, select the icon to the right of the plus, tick the box for the one that you want to delete, then click the garbage icon at the bottom. Here's a quick tip. 
If you can learn how to use the Windows key shortcuts, you'll find that it makes navigating Windows a lot faster. In an earlier segment, I showed you this Windows key shortcut guide, which displays some of the more popular Windows key combinations. It's part of a free set of utilities from Microsoft called Power Toys. In a strange move, it's not available from the Microsoft Store. Instead, you can download the installer from the GitHub website. I'll provide a link in the description to this page, along with a link to our beginner's guide video for Power Toys for those of you that want to try it out. If you haven't used the Windows 10 game bar for a while, it's now full of cool extras that might be useful for you. To bring it up, press the Windows key plus G. As usual, you can still take a screenshot and record your gameplay. There's an audio widget with system and app controls, and below that is one that shows your system performance. And over here to the right, the Xbox Social Overlay lets you chat with your friends and see who is online. And if you go to the Overlay menu, you can remove or add additional overlays, including this new one here from Spotify, which I haven't used yet, that requires that you link your Spotify account. Ransomware is a nasty malware that encrypts your data, holding it hostage unless you pay a ransom. Recently, our city was also the victim of a massive attack, and it wouldn't surprise me if they're still using Windows XP. To help protect your computer, ransomware protection is now included with Windows Defender. So let's go back to the search box and do a search for Windows Security. When it shows up, select it. Go into Virus and Threat Protection, scroll down, and select Manage Ransomware Protection. Turning on Controlled Folder Access blocks unauthorized changes to your protected files, folders, and memory. Selecting Protected Folders will show you a list of folders currently being protected. You can choose to add additional folders by selecting the plus next to Add a Protected Folder, then browse your computer for that folder. If you want more control of your graphics hardware for specific programs or games to improve the performance or extend your battery life, let's head over to the Graphics Performance Preference Settings. In the Windows 10 Settings app, go to System. In the Display tab, scroll all the way down and select Graphics Settings. With the game I have listed here, when you select it and go to Options, you can set the Graphics Preference. The choices are System Default, Power Saving, and High Performance. For those of you that are familiar with this game, you know high performance is the way to go. So I'll save that one. For less intensive games like indie games, you might want to choose power saving, especially when playing on your laptop to save your battery. You can also select browse to add more games and programs. To automate the process of getting rid of the worthless junk on your PC, in the settings app, let's go to system and select storage from the left pane. Toggle the switch on for storage sense. Having this turned on will automatically delete temporary files, files in your recycle bin, and files in your downloads folder. You can also configure how it works by selecting the link, configure storage sense, or run it now. You can choose how often it runs, and if you want temporary files and files in your downloads folder included when it runs. Also, if you use OneDrive Cloud Storage, Storage Sense can also remove unused content from your computer that is already backed up to OneDrive. For me personally, I have this set to never. I prefer my files to be easily accessible offline on my drives in case of an internet outage or any other unforeseen problem. If you want to change the size or color of your mouse cursor due to a visual impairment issue or just for fun, in the Settings app, go to Ease of Access. On the left, select Cursor and Pointer. You can change the pointer size all the way up to 15, your choices for pointer colors are white, black, inverted, and you can choose your own color. There are suggested pointer colors listed below, or you could pick a custom color. It used to be that if you wanted to change the audio output on your computer, you would have had to have gone to the control panel or the settings app to make the change. They've made the process faster to make the switch. Go to the system tray in the taskbar and left click the speaker icon. Above the volume control, select the audio device name, and you'll see a full list of your audio output devices, making it quicker and easier to make the switch. When you launch the File Explorer in Windows 10, the default view is Quick Access, which shows frequently used folders and your most recent files. If you prefer the more familiar, this PC interface, click the View tab here at the top. Then on the ribbon, click on Options. In the General tab, to the right of Open File Explorer 2, Select this PC from the drop-down menu, then click on OK. Now when you open File Explorer, you'll get the This PC Layout. 
A lesser known tool that's been around since Windows Vista is the Reliability Monitor. It assesses your system's overall stability and can help with troubleshooting issues. To open it, go to the search bar and type Reliability. Select View Reliability History. When it opens, you'll see a graph with errors that occurred for each day. When you select a day, below it lists the critical events and warnings. Below those are the informational events in blue, which you don't have to worry about. For any issue, when you click View Technical Details, you'll see a description that might help you to resolve your problem. If you haven't used Jump List yet, you should. When you've pinned programs to your taskbar, right-clicking those icons will bring up a pop-up list of common shortcuts and your most recent activity, letting you get back to a previous location quicker. This next tip is a quick reminder to manage those pesky programs that want to start up when you boot your computer. Let's head to the Task Manager. There are several ways to get there. For this example, right-click the taskbar and select Task Manager. At the top, click on Startup. The more programs you have enabled at startup, the more it will impact your boot time. For each program you don't need enabled at startup, right-click on the name and select Disable. When in doubt, leave it enabled. I know that ShareX and Spotify are not needed at startup, so I'll disable those now and just manually open them up when I need them. For those of you that use the command prompt, Windows 10 has added the ability to use Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V to copy and paste in the command prompt window but you have to enable it first. In the search bar, type CMD and select Command Prompt. Right-click on the title bar and go to Properties. In Edit Options, check the box next to Enable Control Key Shortcuts. Then click OK. Now you can easily copy using Control C and paste using Control V in the Command Prompt window. If you're a power user that has recently made the switch from an older Windows operating system, you might be happy to know that the Easter egg known as God Mode is still available in Windows 10. It's great for those people that want a massive amount of settings all within a single user interface. To enable it, right click on your desktop, go down to New, and select Folder. Rename the folder with the text on the screen, or copy and paste it from the description of this video. Then hit Enter. If done correctly, this folder will become this icon, and when you open it, you'll now have the ultimate control with more settings than you would probably ever need. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up. If you have a tip or trick for using Windows 10 you'd like to share with the class, let us know about it in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos on Windows 10 and other tech-related stuff here on Tech Umbo.